Okay, okay, let's see if everything is rolling over here. Get this thing started. Okay, sounds like we've got everything going on. Okay, cool. We've got some people watching already. Thanks for joining us. This is our sketching after hours session. We're going to be talking about sketchbooks today. Okay, let me turn on the camera here. Get, get this done for a second here. Oop. That turned off. Cool. Cool. How's everybody doing? I hope you're all having a great night tonight. Everything is going well. Um, I'm excited to be here with you all. And uh, if you're jumping on uh, to the live stream, uh, drop your name into the chat. Love to see who's hanging out with us tonight. I got Spicer. What's going on, Spicer? How you doing? What's going on, Brother Paul? Hope you've been having uh, have a great week and super uh, productive. Yeah, you know, uh, this week, uh, 2024, is uh, just like been gangbusters right now. And uh, right now I'm busy doing a lot of different things besides the live streams right now. And doing a lot of uh, storyboarding and uh, making a lot of connections right now with folks uh, to, to see what uh, projects I can lay out for myself. Uh, now that the strike is over, folks are getting back to work and things like that. Uh, holidays are all over, so it's it's go time. So uh, I'm excited to see what happens uh, this year and uh, what's going on. i got a lot of friends uh, tweeting in my ears, and uh, we'll just see what happens. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting into those uh, some of those fun projects that we all uh, are looking forward to getting into. Uh, let me check the chat here real quick. I uh, got Maria. How you doing, Maria? Nice to see you. I hope you had a great holiday. Uh, Yeshava, how you doing? How's it going? Good to see you. I'm glad you got some good value out of that uh, that episode that we were all on on the uh, live stream. But great to see everybody. I am so happy to be with you all. Um, if we've not met before and you're watching this on the replay, my name is Paul Anjali. I am a live action storyboard artist and uh, come to you uh, with this uh, YouTube channel. Um, try to have fun with it uh, and make it fun for myself and uh, I, hope, I hope it's fun for you. I've tried to, trying to build this channel to be for you out there in uh, the audience and uh, YouTube land and everybody out there, but for especially for those folks that love drawing, love visual storytelling. Um, and what I do with this channel is I share my journey and my sort of processes. And you can sort of take the the the, the, the points that I talk about during these live sessions and you could use those uh, and hone them into your own uh, work ethic, style of storyboarding you do and everything. So I'm trying to make this a resource for you friends uh, out there. And uh, I've done a lot of how-tos, uh, tutorials, uh, coming to you three times a week, uh, and uh, hopefully we get some great value out of it. Whether if you're, uh, you're doing live action storyboards, or you're doing feature storyboards, uh, you know, a, a sort of a, either uh, something for a Cartoon Network, or you know, you're just doing a, a regular uh, you know, uh, TV streaming series, uh, cartoon, doing music videos, you're doing comics, any type of visual storytelling, even if you're doing a YouTube video. I don't see why this couldn't help you out too, of putting together uh, your scripts and your and your uh, storyboards uh, together on how you want to put together your productions here on YouTube, but lots to do. And uh, so use this as a resource, or if you're just a friend out there and just wants to see what storyboards are all about, watch somebody do storyboards and sort of how, how does that uh, process work uh, you know you can sort of get all that information here um, I come to you three days a week and uh, let me pull that 
image up real quick. I come to you three days a week. So on Tuesdays, uh, my sort of programming right now is on Tuesdays, I, I do storyboarding, mastering the basics. And what I do with the storyboarding, master the basics series is it's pretty much your how-to, it's your tutorial, it's the uh, your bread and butter, your base foundation of how to storyboard. You know, we've done everything from, you know, shot lists to composition to everything from how to break down a, a uh, you know a shooting script all the way through to animatic you know so uh, some great great content there uh, I keep uh, get, uh, on Tuesday we went over how to take massive action how do you set goals uh, and I think the biggest things was is, is take action you know do the work you know and then also keep your mind free you know uh, you can make mistakes but how you know uh, don't be so hard on yourself some days you just have bad art days it's just not working for you you know other days you just got to get that blank page there's nothing for an artist than seeing that blank canvas or the blank screen and you're and you're sitting there going oh man what am i going to draw today you know or how am i going to tackle this problem you know so we talked about all that stuff uh this last tuesday but there's uh, check out the playlist really cool playlist um go through them all i know it's a lot of content uh, I have some ideas of trying to shrink those down to give you more uh, bite size, uh, you know, tidbits out of that so you can uh, sort of get to it and sort of understand what's going on. But back to our, our programming, I also have on Thursdays like today, uh, we have our uh, sketching after hours. Sketching after hours is, I, I think sketching is pretty pretty darn important and, and drawing and leisurely drawing or just sketching. Um, there's a lot of knowledge that you can get from sketching and having a consistent pattern, like we were talking about setting goals and having a consistent pattern every day, whether if it's 10 minutes, an hour, 30 minutes on a lunch break or whatever you're liking to do, um, just sketch, break out the sketchbook. I don't care if it's on a napkin, a piece of paper, or whatever, put it in a manila envelope or whatever, but sketch every single day. You got to put in the reps. It's like you're, you're this giant bodybuilder and you're trying to build up your skills and your talent and uh, you want to put in the reps. I, I call it either put it in the, put it in the pencil reps you know, I don't know if you go like this, you're like, eh, put in the pencil reps or whatever it might be, but put in those pencil reps. The other thing I call it is pencil mileage. You gotta put a lot of miles and lines down to get good at your craft. And I don't care if you're a comic book artist, uh, uh, an animator, uh, a storyboard artist, an illustrator, or just you love to draw, draw people in funny, you know, funny faces, you know, you're one of those people at the fair and like to draw, make people happy by doing their caricatures, you know, uh, but put in the time, you got to put in the, 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 the maximum effort. And that's why I kicked off uh, our last uh, live session with uh, taking massive action. So again, uh, continuing on going. Uh, and then on Saturdays, uh, I have my storyboard jam sessions where I pick out a topic uh, of, of a film or something that's inspiring me and then I go and I do a, a you know I just go and, and start uh, storyboarding and thumbnailing from there just having some fun uh, with that uh, with this uh, weekend I am I'm, I'm hoping I can I can meet with you guys on Saturday if I can't I'll, I'll either do it on Sunday or, or give an extra day on Monday or something because I don't want to miss that jam session with you guys I have to take my eldest son uh, back to university and we have to draw and pull him off and over here on the East Coast there's a huge snowstorm coming so I don't want to overcommit I know um, if I if I can have the live session on Saturday I will make it happen but uh, if I'm caught up in the snow and travel, I, I might not make it home in time. So, because uh, we got a little bit of ways to go. So anyway, uh, just a heads up for you folks uh, that might be joining me on Saturday. If I can't, I'll try to text something out through Instagram or uh, set a new time. Uh, but we're gonna definitely have a jam session because I love jam sessions. But anyways, uh, let me go back over here to the chat real quick just to make sure we got everybody on board like i said i got spicer on the on the uh, live chat thanks spicer for dropping by i got my friend maria i got yashava how you doing uh, ronnie's back again hey ronnie how you doing good to see you hey paul nice to be able to join again uh lots going on lately hope you had a good christmas and new year uh yeah it was it was a great christmas there's nothing uh, like the holidays to, to hang out with your family and friends and you know bring in the new year um, it goes too quick though just way too quick uh, 
just to get a, uh, some time off. Uh, and uh, HMT, hey, how you doing? Good. Hello back to you. Spicer says, don't forget to like the video, Warriors. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Thanks, Spicer. Thanks for kicking me off there. Nice little segue. You know, if you're enjoying these live streams, please, I ask, I'm growing with you guys and um, having fun doing this, trying to give back to you fellow artists out there. And, and if this is a, a place for you to stay consistent or we get inspired, because we're going to work on all sorts of cool stuff this year. And I got a lot of cool things planned. Uh, under the hood right now and I can't wait to start uh, you know mentioning those things and, and uh, celebrating those things to see how I can offer you greater value for those of you that are trying to uh, pursue this as a career uh, get more education and uh, keep going I always have fun teaching and, and sharing and uh, you know I used to I was a college a university instructor um, over at my uh, university that I graduated with my master's from, and I got, got the opportunity to teach, uh, and uh, I had so much fun teaching, and, and that's why I started the YouTube channel, because I had a lot of pros out there and friends out there going, hey, listen, why don't you start up a YouTube channel? You're a great teacher, Paul. Have some fun. Come on, Paul, you do this, you know? And so uh, uh, with your help and uh, you following along and uh, hanging out with me, um, we keep this thing growing, and we're growing. It's, this thing's been growing like crazy. Last time I checked, we're well over, what, is it 625, something like that. Subscribers, it's grown so quick, and it's because of you and your passion about this topic of visual storytelling. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to share my experiences, passion, and uh, journey with you all. So thanks so much. Uh, again, thanks for Spicer. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop me a comment. If not, uh, and let me put up my uh, little board here, too. Let's see right here. This is how you get a hold of me. Uh, you can reach me. My name is Paul Angeli. Like I said, I'm a live action storyboard artist. Uh, my contact uh, and uh, information and for inquiries, you can reach me at mr.paul.angeli at gmail.com. You can also catch me on my uh, website. It's www.paul. A N G E L I dot com. And then uh, you could reach me on uh, Instagram. Uh, I usually get a lot of DMs from a lot of my buddies uh, and friends out there on Instagram. So feel free. Don't be shy. Say, hey, what's up, Polly? Even if you're just dropping a line and share with me what you're working on. Love to see what you're doing and what you're up to. And then uh, also yeah, over here on YouTube or on LinkedIn, you could reach out to me there. Um, anyway, uh, let's go back over to our. Our chat here, so HMT, Spicer, Spicer, you got to put in the reps, uh, have a black belt mentally <laughs> mentality, yeah, totally. Man, I love martial arts. Uh, to me, I was big in uh, Taekwondo, wrestling and Taekwondo uh, in my younger days, and uh, uh, my youngest son is a heck of a wrestler, and, uh, you know, I, I just uh, have a fun, I love martial arts, I love martial art films, um, I think I gave everybody my, my little Jean-Claude Van Damme story. If not, check out a couple of uh, live streams ago about that. And, uh, you know, but uh, love, uh, you know, Bruce Lee movies, Jackie Chan movies, uh, the, you know, uh, a lot of the old stuff. I, I like the newer stuff, you know, and have fun uh, with uh, John Wick or uh, just all these fantastic, you know, martial artists out there. But yeah, you got to put in the reps. You got to put in the practice each and every day. Uh, you know, go to your uh, your office, your quiet space, your dojo, and go and practice your craft. The only way you're going to get better at what we do is you put in the reps. You put in the pencil mileage. So if that's a, it's a mindset, like I said, you got to take massive action. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put in the work, and you really do, and you'll become great at what you're doing. You know, I, I look at uh, the course of how I used to draw when I was a kid, to young person, to uh, you know, college student, to professional. You know, uh, long journey. You know, and it's it's been fun. So yeah, black belt mentality. You said it, Spicer. HMT. I'm an animator, uh, so your sketching helps me a lot. Cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I was an animator as well. Um, how, when I was uh, getting into, uh, just a quick story, segue real quick. Uh, when I was getting into, I, I, I always wanted to be a doctor. And uh, back when I was in high school, and then uh, I was always doing a lot of medical illustration and things like that. And, and uh, I, I was sort of studying, getting ready for medicine and stuff like that. And then um, uh, I had a friend... Uh, get me into a computer animation class and uh, 
man, that, that, that blew off the, the hood off the car on that one. And I never looked back ever since. And uh, uh, at that time, I, I studied uh, traditional animation. I sort of self-taught on that one. I didn't go to an art college or anything like that, but uh, taught myself, uh, you know, animation. Started doing a lot of animation for CD-ROM games, video games, edutainment, and stuff like that. I uh, did a lot of sculpting, too. A uh, big thing for me was, at, back in the day, was to uh, work over at uh, Industrial Lights and Magic and work uh, in the creature shop. That was always a, a fantasy of mine back in the day, and I just, I was sculpting and everything uh, during that time, doing a lot of, something that you'd see, like, in Face Off and that show, but that was back a long time ago, and uh, doing latex masks, foam latex, and all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, it was fun. I enjoyed it, but I, I sort of went more towards the the, the business end and uh, also the artistic side of uh, what what I do today. So anyway, it was lots of fun. But animation's fun. I still do animation now. I love it. It's it's fun. Uh, I have a friend out there. I got to start working on that uh, that blender grease pencil blender. I haven't touched that very much right now, but I want to uh, put a lot of that work into my um, storyboard. Uh, you know, a plethora of uh, skill sets, and so I, I've used a lot of 3D programs in the, in the in the past. I just haven't done anything recently, and that's something uh, that I'm challenging myself this year with too. So hopefully, I can share that good stuff with you just for fun. Anyway, but cool. HMT sounds cool. And then I got uh, BNZN.D. Hello, how you doing? Good to see you back again. And then Ronnie says I've been drawing every day so far this year and for hours at a time i'm proud of that and you know what ronnie i'm proud of you too you know you got to put in that pencil mileage my friends and so today's uh that's a great segue ronnie so we're going to go into today's fantastic lesson and we're going to be talking about sketchbooks so i'm not going to pull out all my sketchbooks but my sort of you know sketchbooks that i love and i I have so many sketchbooks. I have a whole uh, bookcase here of sketchbooks of all the different years of, uh, that I've been drawing, different styles, different ways I've, I've been doing stuff from cartoony stuff to, uh, you know, all, all sorts of stuff. And let's see, when when is this one from? Uh, this one's from a long time ago. I'll see if you guys can see it and stuff. This one's from a long time ago, but let's see here if I can get this to work with you or let's see which way I'm going okay and you can sort of see that uh, let's see what else do I have and this is this is pretty old too oh yeah, yeah. so if you like those uh, monsters and stuff like that I had a different way different it's more cartoony style you know back in the day so if you're sitting there looking at rockers and crazy stuff and sort of get an idea for that just show. yeah one of these days i'll have to do some uh, sketchbook stuff this is heck of old oh this is a i guess zombies were popular at the time so so if you're talking about that animation style you know that's totally it right here uh hmt <laughs> I've, I've changed my styles throughout the years, depending on the projects that I'm working on. Uh, done all different types of things. Let's see what else I got here that's sort of cool. Here's some cool pirate, more, I would say more Disney-like, you know, pirate stuff I've done in the past. Here's another one. Oh, let's see here. Let's find some fun stuff here. I guess uh, back in the day I did this uh, sketchbook challenge. And that's what I put a lot of that stuff on to. Here, here's like a, whoever's into horror, all of your fancy. These are just all pencil sketches and stuff. Nothing fancy, but let me see if I can get this in front of the camera there. Got Gremlins and Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers, Puppet Master, Ash from Army of Darkness, Chucky, Hellraiser, all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, one of these days I'll just have to do a 
what would you call it a uh, just different stuff I'll, I'll try pencils this is all in grayscale right now but uh, and this is in color too just nights and just different designs for children I did a lot with children's books and things like that but uh, just different uh, styles and when you're when you're practicing stuff too you know you sit there and you go you know challenging yourself for drawing faces and all that stuff you know so I think it's always important to to have these sketchbooks so I, I always look at my sketchbooks all the time and, and to get ideas or you know try different things you know you can sort of see here's like some cutouts of magazines and things like that just uh doing some different uh you know just different ways to do art and stuff and this is boy this is a really old one too holy smoke see what else i got let me pull out another book see what some of these other ones are but sketchbooks are important and this is what we're going to be talking about today too you know, if you're even if you're looking at boy, this is back in '99. You know, just uh, different sketches. That's pretty old. Wow. Let's see what else I got in here. Just trying different techniques and things like that. Let's, you know, what was that one? I got so many in here. It's crazy. Different styles, you know, different uh, artists inspire me. You know, as you're looking, you know, here's, you know, Star Wars type of stuff, Jabba, you know, Boba Fett, just different uh, styles, Hellboy, Doctor Strange. You know, just different stuff and different styles and things I see. Just uh, let's see what else I got here. Yeah, we'll have to do this one of these days. Have my uh, infamous. Uh, it was inspired by Samuel Jackson from Glass, from the. What do you call it? The Unbreakable series. Let me see what else I have here. Just different stuff. Just looking for some of the stuff that's uh let's see if I have anything else in there. Too. I got so many of these books. Something that's uh showing and uh Ronnie was saying, you know, uh or first I said uh thanks so much you guys that's awesome thanks uh, so let's go back in the chat real quick while I'm hanging out I've been trying every day uh, Yashava uh, uh, we just started using grease pencil in, in the office cool I hope that that was what's working for you I, I hope you you're enjoying it I hope my camera here is working okay um, this thing is off a little bit See if we can get this to work again. Here, let me turn it on and turn it on again. Oh, come on, camera. See if we get this to focus again. Yeah, because I'm putting that that uh, stuff in front of the camera. Uh, I got a couple sketchbooks for Christmas. Uh, BNZN. Uh, D, this is awesome. This one looks so stylized. Yeah, I, I was playing around with different styles and, and stuff like that. Let me just see if I have anything else. I, I started developing just different, you know, animation styles and different stuff. You can sort of see, you know, like here is, I don't know if you can see that one there, just like sort of storyboard sketches and all sorts of stuff. Did a lot of cartoon work and I was looking for some more of the realistic stuff. Let me just go through these. I mean, I'm, by, by the time I get done looking at looking through all these, there's gonna be so many piles of stuff. You know, and even when I'm I'm uh, sketching, you know, I'll do all my storyboards and things like that back in the day. 
and just draw them out. Just uh, in learning and, and, and everything of what you're doing here. Let's see what else do I have here. You know, just like, you know, from fairy tale stuff. Let me see here. You know, the different just styles. Let's see what else. I'll go out through one more and we'll see what else we got. Doopy doopy doo. -doo, -doo, -doo. You know, even back in the day, you know, just practicing um, body structures. I tend to, to um, a lot of the things I, I do right now, it's like, I guess this was a self-portrait from a long time ago. <laughs> just, <laughs> just different ways of drawing. What else do I have in this one? Just different, I don't know, you can sort of get the idea. Just different styles and different ways I was drawing. I was doing a lot of animation at the time. So anyways, that's good for that. And I hope you enjoyed that little memory lane there. That's pretty cool. So uh, thanks so much, everybody. Uh, you know, just having fun with it. Ske uh, sketchbooks, uh, Spicer said, sketchbooks are a good reminder of how far you've progressed or stayed the same. Yeesh, uh, the paper doesn't lie. Yeah, that's true. And um, we'll be talking about that, about sketchbooking. And, and today, uh, I hope the camera's back in focus now, uh, bnzn.d, and then uh, your range of styles is awesome. Uh, do you prefer realism or stylized? Wow, that's a good question. Hmm. Depends on the project, my friend. Uh, you know, um, I always found it in my, you know, you sit there and you work on your toolkit of uh, how you operate as a storyboard artist. You know, a lot of the stuff I do today is uh, realistic. It's, uh, it, it's more, I would say, more of the, if I'm drawing real quick, like, and we'll practice some of that stuff tonight, is it's more like a... Uh, ooh, I, wanna, I don't want to say golden age of comic style or illustration style, but I, I try to stick to that. Um, a lot of uh, artists like uh, Toth, um, you know, uh, keep it simple. If I, if I'm, and it depends on what the project's doing. I'll, I'll change up my style. Um, I always want to deliver a consistent style. So if I, if if I'm being asked to do work in a certain way. Uh, for, from my client or director, I'll keep it to that style. And, and I'll change that style up to, if it's live action, if it's uh, feature animation, if it's uh, you know a serialized animation or whatever it might be, or if it's comic work or whatever, um, I'll tend to, to move that spectrum, you know. Um, uh, do I have one that's a favorite of uh, than the other? Not really. I like it all, you know, and so that that's why I sort of, you know, I think of uh, my skill sets and, and my uh, ability to draw. It's almost like speaking in different languages, you know. Um, if you need to do a cartoon thing, I can do that. If I need a realistic thing like that, if I needed full realistic or, you know, simplification of realistic, um, I'll... I'll, I'll divide and conquer, you know. If I'm just sketching for myself, I, I tend to, um, gosh, um, if I'm drawing something for myself, I'm more, uh, um, I would say, uh, leaning towards like a, a gosh, uh, you know, I, I think we were talking about it before, more Hal Foster, who is doing like, uh, I really enjoy his work, uh, you know, uh, from a, you know, Prince Valiant, or uh, you're, you're sitting there looking at, uh, you know, Flash Gordon, the early Flash Gordon, you know, I think I've mentioned it before, uh, Pepe Gonzalez, um, uh, you know, uh, love his work for women in Vampirilla, you know, I would say he was the, you know, I would compare it to like somebody like today, J. Scott Campbell doing all the pinups and stuff like that. Um, you know, I think I've 
mentioned uh, Sean Gordon Murphy. I just love his inks. His inks are absolutely phenomenal. And I love his sort of retro 1970s cars and, and things like that. I think they're really cool. Um, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, I, there's a lot of people that just that catch my attention if I'm looking more of a, a comic style or a cartoony style. You know, I, I love all different types of things, you know, uh, in terms of, of what I've seen out there. Um, Sean Galloway, uh, I don't know if you've seen his work. Uh, it goes by Cheeks. Uh, I, I, I ran into him at a comic convention once. Just uh, I know I've chatted with him back and forth on Instagram every once in a while, but fantastic. I love his style. You know, he does a lot of this, uh, you know, stuff for young kids and stuff. And uh, yeah, sort of, a, but it's his own style, you know, yet, uh, you know, other artists that, that I love their, you know, style, whether it be uh, uh, Frank Quietly or uh, just whoever it might be. I, my styles change and artists, uh, inspire me and so I, I sort of modify my style a little bit so it's sort of interesting um okay let's see uh yeah your range of styles is awesome did you pre-release with that spicers oh snap flash gordon is one of my favorite movies I, no it, it back in the day that was that was the thing you know even if you go back to the black and whites and stuff like that but uh cool stuff and, and I, I just sort of base it on uh, what's you know when i'm working professionally it's like what's the most what's what makes the most sense you know um every line we put down uh counts and so if we're talking about speed or or because we're trying to when you're working on storyboarding we were talking about this uh our last you know go around about storyboards versus comics okay um i want to do enough simplification to tell a story and i'm here to solve a problem you know, and I think there, when you're working with live action verse, if I'm working on uh, Adventure Time or, uh, you know, uh, it was a regular show, Clarence or any of these, you know, other, other, other things. I remember uh, my younger brothers, when they were kids, they loved the, the Robotech series, you know, the cartoons that were out uh, uh, and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I, I think it all depends on, on what you're working on, um, a live action storyboard artist is trying to keep as many lines down, uh, maybe three or four values of, of uh, tone, and get to the point because we're here to push story. We're here to tell a story, and every shot ca counts. And we ha sort of have uh, uh, the artwork needs to be disposable as well, you know. And it's hard at times because you're doing all this work, but you, you you get over it because we're all together to make the blueprint. Um, you know, whether if you're a single storyboard artist or you're working with a fantastic team and, and a lot of my buddies out there are just wonderful pros and, uh, you know, really uh, everybody works together uh, for the same vision. And it's just like whether it be a storyboard team on a pre-production team or you're working with the talent, the, the stunt coordinators, uh, visual effects folks, y all, you're, we're all one big team and you're trying to get the whole thing done. So anyways. Cool. Well, I'm glad everybody's having a good time. But let's um, let's get back to um, one more thing. I started watching Reacher because your storyboards love it. We'll get some. Uh, uh, well, we get some more sketch series of how you interpret a scene from the movie or show. That was fun. <laughs> glad you had a good time. Oh man, I'm loving that Reacher. I think, uh, uh, like I said, I had to get my my oldest son off to university on Saturday, and I'm like, oh man, it comes out tomorrow night. We got to get to bed early. And I'm just like, man, okay, what's what's going on? Uh, and, uh, there's, I think there's like, uh, I think there's three more episodes left. Uh, man, that thing, that's a good show, you know? And, and, and I love shows that have, uh, good writing, good cinematography, good acting, um, really well put together, good storyline. And, uh, I really enjoyed that show. And if there's a show that out there that you guys are watching, uh, let me know. I'll check it out whenever I, I have some free time and stuff. So, but yeah, I'm glad. I don't know. I, what? I, I like the idea. Uh, I think uh, what, what I might do is I might not call it Reacher, but uh, maybe we'll have some fun uh, because these are uh, some of the many topics I want to have fun and hang out with you and talk about is, is like action. How, how, how do we do an action sequence? You know, uh, I think we did one on car chases, but you know, what's a good fight scene? I want to do a good Kung Fu or Samurai, you know, fight sequence and stuff like that. So we got, I got some things planned for you friends and hang tight. We're, we're going to do it. Okay, so let's get on to our topic today. Let me uh, put 
put up my uh, little information screen. <laughs> crafted, handcrafted. I like that, handcrafted. Okay, let me put up my contact information. Let me change my screens here. Right, that's my that's my website. If you want to check it out, check it out at www.paulangeli.com. Okay, uh, let's do this like that, and like that. See how we did? Did we do it? All right, we did it! Yay! Okay, so now I'm little Paul. Big Paul's gone, and little Paul's here. Okay, so Yashava, <laughs> looking forward to it. Okay, now now you guys are holding me to the fire, friends. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So um, today we're talking about sketching after hours, um, and we're talking about sketchbooks. That that's the real focus of uh, tonight's lecture. We've had some fun hanging out and chatting, and and my sort of thought around this is it's 2024 no better way and i know ronnie and a few of you have your brand new sketchbooks rip them out rip them out of the plastic man and and open them up okay and i consider your sketchbook and i love these hardbound ones because when i when i travel if i'm in the airport or something and if you ever catch me I'm, and i'm waiting for my flight You'll always find me sitting there with some earbuds on or my, my uh, noise canceling headphones. I'm just sitting there drawing, you know. I don't know how many times people have come up to me and like, do you, do you work on movies and stuff? I go, yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, but I, I'm sketching all the time. But that, that book of, of pages, um, you can do more with it than just draw pictures in it, you know. And uh, that's what we're here to talk about tonight and uh, sort of have fun with it as you break out those new uh, sketchbooks and stuff. So let me go over to my um, sketching after hours. So why sketchbook? Um, and I started typing up in here and I'm going to sort of make this sort of interactive because it gets boring just watching a screen. So um, the first thing, so you have your sketchbook, you get this brand new sketchbook and I'm just going to share with you what I do with it. You know, a lot of YouTube videos come out. And, Let me give you the five points or the three points of a sketchbook or whatever you might want to do. A lot of people, and you see these sketchbooks and they're almost like a pure piece of artwork. You know, if you're watching YouTube videos and, and, and some of these sketchbooks are just they're brilliant they're they're absolutely beautiful you know uh you know unfortunately you can't hang it up on a wall you know <laughs> or anything like that but I, I sort of use uh my sketchbook as my document for learning and i think it's really important you know i use it as a, a, a document and, and i think uh, uh spicer somebody was mentioning it to it is like when it's done that's why i have so many of these books everywhere and um my wife is always telling me, hey, clean up your office. You got books everywhere, you know, because um, I, I go and I refer to these things. So um, it's, it's documenting your journey. We were talking about the, the, the journey and your, your milestones and smart goals and taking massive action. And I think you need to document your learning because, you know, we get busy. Uh, sometimes we forget you know, of what was important, what wasn't important, how did we do that? So I think it's super important to document your learning as uh, you're boarding. And uh, I, I think it's a fun thing to do. I think it's something, uh, you know, that you, you would, so uh, what I mean by document learning is when I'm sketching in my sketchbooks, if I'm um, saying a, a human body and I'm studying anatomy, I'll do all my anatomy charts on there with my eight high eight heads high uh what's the difference between a male and a female figure i'll do my gesture drawings i'll do my hands and i'll do a lot of construction drawing and uh, those type of details so if i need to go back and refresh myself on perspective or i need to refresh myself on certain things i'll just pop up with my sketchbooks and relook at it go, oh yeah that's right you know type of thing so um uh, I'll, I'll usually work like that i'll also uh Pop this back by one. I'll also use my, um, come on computer. I'll also uh, use my uh, sketchbook as a journal. Uh, I'll journal in my in my sketchbook. Like, what am I trying to, when we're talking about this too, I've sort of moved away a little bit on the sketchbook with my 
how do I do my blocking? And if you want to watch that video, go back and look at the live uh, stream on, uh, you know, how I put together my, my plans and, and looking at a week by week uh, and how I use the, the term blocking in terms of getting things done. But I, I use my sketchbook as a journal too. I'll leave notes, uh, I'll leave, uh, you know, uh, rough drafts uh, of thoughts and ideas of storylines. Um, I'll do all that stuff within my sketchbook too. So if you're going through my sketchbooks, there's, there's a lot of writing, uh, stuff I'm going through. I use it as sort of a documenting my journey uh, through my craft. And uh, I, I use that all the time. So I use it, like I said, documenting my learning Maybe it's a new technique. Maybe I'm painting in my sketchbook. Maybe I'm just doing color theory or something like that. Maybe I'm breaking down composition. Uh, but I'll do that as documenting my learning. I'll also journal within, uh, you know, my book, whether it's uh, for great ideas or whatever it might be. It might be the next cartoon that I might go and pitch somewhere or something like that. Or, uh, you know, put the pitch Bible together of what I'm doing. Um, Of course, you'll have your sketches in there. Okay. Um, when I'm sketchbooking too, I, I, you know, I, I usually use just a, a regular ballpoint pen and uh, my sharpies. You know, when, when I'm drawing, and uh, I don't, and or I'll use uh, so I don't pass out from all the sharpies. Maybe I'll, I'll grab my India ink, my uh, Faber-Castell pe pens and stuff like that so I'm not sucking in all the fumes and, and stuff like that uh, for what I'm doing. Uh, but, I'll, but I'll do my drawings and sometimes it's pencil, sometimes it's Caran d'Ache, it's, sometimes it's ink. Uh, maybe I'm using a nib, maybe I'm using a brush, maybe I'm using a, 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 you know, uh, a brush pen, you know, sometimes I'm using mechanical pencil, uh, sometimes I'm using a, just a number two pencil, um, use colored pencil, um, I don't usually do charcoal, I'll do charcoal on big pads and things like that, it just gets all over the place, and so, um, you know, and a lot of the stuff I have on there, yeah, I, I, I'm not spraying it or anything like that, you keep the, the graphite or anything, I just, I just sketch to sketch, you know, uh, for what I'm doing, so I'm documenting my learning, I'm journaling, uh, I'm doing my sketches, um, you know, um, go back over here. So document your learning, your journaling, your sketches and drawings. Um, so even, even sometimes I'll uh, tape business cards. If I meet, met somebody at, at a show or something like that, um, uh, how would you, I would just, let's just say info. I'll put info in there and uh, you know like if I'm going to a lot of uh, conventions or there's somebody that uh, gave me uh, I know I went to a big uh, children's book fair and I was pitching a children's book and uh, met a lot of people and traded a lot of business cards and got a lot of uh, postcards uh, of folks and and I'll put those in my books too and if there's somebody I, I need to remember it's different today but I'm talking a long time ago and, and just throughout the years and, and using that to, to grab information so I can go back and then I'll, I'll date my sketchbooks and things like that so I know what time period. I always, uh, the other thing too is I always date all my my uh, sketchbooks and things like that. And I'm not in, in some big rush to fill a sketchbook. Uh, I've been pretty loosey-goosey lately and been doing a lot of uh, sketching just on plain paper, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know if you could see this or not. Let's see, go back over here. Just doing different sketches and things like that, you know. Just ideas and, and I'll just do it on a copy piece of paper. Nothing I, I want to hold on to, but just different I, ideas. Like I did that one quick sketch today of sort of a girl that I put onto YouTube today, but just like different sketches and stuff like that. But back to your sketchbook, document what you're learning, journal, uh, sketches and drawings, uh, info. Um, you know, I think uh, another thing too is, is over time, let's just say this, over time, use as a resource uh, for, um,
for inspiration. Okay, so um, I think Spicer mentioned that too in the in in the uh, in the uh, chat there. It's like I'll go back and I'll I'll sit there and go you know because like some of these books I you know I pulled them out for you earlier and I'll just be looking at it going <clears throat> that that was pretty cool <laughs> and uh, put a lot of work into that. Remember that day, Paul? And you know uh, like uh, I'll have little uh, little notes, post its. I'll I'll throw into some of these. You know, uh, like over here, it's like, uh, you know, I'll just do a little title page, have it fun. This uh, this one is all the way back from 2017. Let's see. <clears throat> I was doing a heck of a lot of storyboarding back then. Holy smoke. And you, you could sort of see, you know, oh my goodness gracious. I was really into this really comic style. Let me just pull this back up if we can pull this up real quick. So you guys can see that real quick. You know, just sort of really comic-y sort of, uh, what do you call it, a political cartoon sort of style. And stuff. But all my notes and everything are in there. Let's see what else. What else I got in there for you guys? And we were talking about just different ways of drawing and stuff. So oops. you can sort of see, you know, working on construction and things like that, different ways of cheats of drawing and stuff. So some cool stuff um, that I personally worked on that but yeah it, it inspires you over time so I think at the the end of the day when it comes to your your sketchbook why, why do you sketchbook you know why do you want to hold these documents down why do you want to use this and I think this is a great tool great great tool so if you're taking a massive action on what you're trying to do I think you need to document everything that process I think about like a the, the YouTuber and businessman, Gary V, you know, you get to document your process uh, and uh, have some fun with it, you know, so document your learning, use your sketchbook as a journal, use it for your sketches and your drawings, uh, use it for uh, for your learning, um, you know, when you're when you're watching along with the videos with me or you're watching another storyboard artist or, or somebody who's inspiring you, take those notes into that sketchbook. Um, take down information, uh, whether it be my information or somebody else, you know, um, you know, so you have your contact information there and put it in your phone or wherever you get into, but it's like, it's in your sketchbook, you know, and then over time, use this as a, as a resource for inspiration as you're flipping through and remember in the good old days when you were sketching in your sketchbook or that particular sketchbook, I have so many sketchbooks here, it's sick, but, uh, you know, use those sketchbooks and, uh, have some, uh, fun with it. So, okay, so let's um, hop off this. Let's go hop back onto our other screen here. And I just wanted to, to open it up real quick. I'm going to take a sip of my drink while I'm taking a sip of my drink. Any questions out there on sketchbooks? I'm curious how you guys are using your sketchbooks out there and uh, what your plans are with your sketchbooks in 2024. Take a couple sips of my little sparkly water. Drop it in the chat. I'd love to hear what you're what you're going to do with your sketchbooks this year. Uh, Bnzn.d said uh, I have bad habit of throwing away my drawings. You know what? I do too. You know, um, I see other other people starting to sell their drawings online and things like that. And I was like, well, maybe I should do that one of these days if everybody's interested in drawing buying my sketches and things like that. I see a lot of people just uh, showing them on Instagram and uh, throwing them up there and then people buy their sketches and stuff. So, um, you know, I, I just sort of have fun. I'm always I'm always learning all the time. I had fun. I, I've done this drawing the other day. Just, just fun stuff, just sketching around and stuff. Working on ethnicity, working on different uh, types of uh, faces and hairdos and all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, 
that good stuff. Okay, cool. Anybody else curious what you what do you what do you plan on using your sketchbooks for this year? And uh, hopefully this gives you some ideas of uh, what to use your sketchbook for, and uh, you know how to go forward with that. So uh, anybody else? I just want to leave it open for a couple another minute or so. I'll take another sip of my drink, and then uh, we'll do, do a little bit of drawing here and stuff. So. I, I was trying to set up my camera tonight, so but my camera's been acting funky, and I'm missing a piece of the tripod to hold the camera up while I'm drawing to my sketchbook. So I'm gonna, I'm just going to draw on the computer while we're hanging out, and hopefully get you some time to draw and take those notes in there. I keep a digital sketchbook on Procreate, uh, but maybe I should get uh, back to to uh, paper and try to fill it up. Yeah, I um, I've always uh, man, if I go way back in the day. I'll have to dig it out. It's somewhere. I have my uh, sketchbook from when I was a kid, you know, a little kid. And I had this sketchbook, and I would just draw on it and stuff. And, it, and it's crazy. You sit there, and you're, you're drawing, and you see how, how, many, how much drawings you've done ever since your uh, elementary school, little kid days and stuff like that. Because I was doing animation back when I was a little kid. Uh... Uh, and uh, I remember having my uh, grandfather's uh, VHS camera and what I would do is I would do these drawings and I would cut out all the drawings and have a background and just move the drawings around uh, you know recording and pausing the, the, the camera you know and uh, I made these little cartoons and, and fun stuff like that before I started getting out with my buddies and uh, doing all sorts of crazy westerns and, and remakes of uh, Indiana Jones the truck scene with my brother you know uh, doing that truck scene of you know throwing the guys off the truck and uh, <laughs> did all sorts of crazy stuff uh, let's see uh, so uh, B, uh, bnzn.d keep a digital sketchbook, sketchbook procreate but maybe I should get back to paper and try to fill it up yeah I was I was mentioning about this uh, somebody had hosted a, like a challenge like a summer challenge and uh, uh, this person gave out different prompts and you bought a, a sketchbook and your whole goal was to fill up a sketchbook over the summer. So you can see some of those images. If you go down to the very end of my Instagram feed, you'll, you'll see some of those images like I was showing you earlier. And that was part of that summer competition. I think uh, challenges are a good way to inspire you to get things done. And maybe we'll do some over here, you know, uh, on the channel. Let's just do some challenges to get you going, get the juices flowing, get the hands flowing, shake it out and, and draw some cool stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's just sort of fun to do. Um, and keep, keeps you, keeps you going, keeps you passionate, keeps you interested. Maybe we'll do some storyboard challenges or just some drawing challenges. It'd be sort of fun. Uh, Maria says, uh, trying to use it for everything, not just cutesy things. Yeah, no, I, I, I do all sorts of stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, I'll be, I'll be doing drawings of whatever. If I'm, I'm feeling drawing nudes, I'll do nudes. I don't usually post in that stuff, but it's like, whatever, you know, maybe I'll just do wild animals or, you know, uh, birds and do ink fancy ink illustrations of birds you know we're, we're a big uh, outdoor family over here so we always have uh, all the feeders here up and got all sorts of cool birds out here from the east coast so drawing those all the time but yeah cool yeah use that sketchbook for anything maria use it for anything uh yashava um i use a big roll of paper can't take it out but the mileage i get is really good cool yeah now it's yeah that'd be sort of tough to bring a big roll of paper but I, I totally got you the big butcher block I you know I can totally understand what you're doing yeah and roll it up and, and unroll it and, and at your leisure and show your work you know anything napkins I don't know there's there's stuff I've have in boxes and boxes of stuff you know I'm drawing on the back of an uh, you know a mail envelope to a napkin of great ideas and I don't want to throw them away because they're good ideas you know uh, for that uh, HMT, do you think emotions influence drawings? Sometimes I think it's okay. Sometimes I'm not satisfied with the sketch. So one more time, do you think emotions influence drawing? Sometimes I think it's okay. Yeah. Um, we were talking about it uh, on our last live stream. It's about your mindset, right? If you're, uh, I think your mood has a lot to do with it too. And remember, um, we were talking just a tad bit, and this goes into like mental health of artists. Maybe down the road we could talk about this. Um, but you got to be cool, you know. And we were talking about the 
some people run at a really a level high energy and other people like low and i sort of like i like staying in the middle you know where i'm not too like ah you know where i'm not like hey man you know um i think it's great for animation but <laughs> You know, when, you, when you're drawing, I think it's to, to stay positive. You know, you're going to have a bad art day. Get over it. <laughs> I do too. You know, some days I'm, I'm sitting there drawing and going, man, do you need to go back to school, Paul? You don't know how to draw this and that. Or I can't draw that hand in that angle. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> Uh, it happens because remember this is all muscle memory your brain is telling going working through your arm and to your hand to do this do that and you're creating at the same time and you're, the physical and mental stimulation on top of the the muscle skills uh, to do that you know to, to, to be an artist um, one of the things I do I'm left-handed so I'm always dragging my dang hand everywhere if I'm doing pencil you I just you'll always look on the bottom of my hand I probably have enough there to make a drawing just because I'm rubbing it everywhere. That's why I tend to sometimes go to uh, ink uh, and uh, Sharpie and stuff because I'm not bleeding every bleeding the, the graphite everywhere. So, but good stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I think it does uh, happen like that and uh, you gotta be okay, you know, be cool, you know. Uh, you're gonna have a bad art day. Everybody does. I don't care how famous you are, you know, at, at what you're doing or how good you are. It's like you have a bad art day. You get a bad art day, man. Get over it. But what did you learn? What triggered that bad art day? What do you think it was? Were you too tired? Did you not get enough sleep? Um, did you, um, you know, did you not hit the project the right way? You know, was it just not inspirational work? You know, and uh, you know, just gotta get in, get it done. We're pros here. So we got to be professional and get the work done. You know, uh, you're trying to provide a service to another uh, director or client. You got to come through. You got to hit that deadline. It doesn't matter what your emotional state is. You, you made a commitment. You honor that commitment. You be professional and you turn in the best work possible. And uh, and it, it, it's always uh, your, your balance. So if you always stay even keeled, you know, find that place. If you're having a bad day, find that place that you can get centered again. Find the inner chi, find the inner peace, and get in and get it done. You know, use those those tools for inspiration. Use that book you've been drawing in all year long to remind yourself you are a good artist and you deserve to have that job. You deserve those things and uh, learn learn from it. So, hope that helps a little bit. A little bit of mental health and drawing here. Okay. Um, Ronnie said, uh, led to some challenges. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, here, let me write that down. I thought, I thought it was a good idea too. Challenges. Yeah, I'd love to see some art challenges. I got some other buddies out there. You know, uh, the other thing too, I don't know if you guys would be inter interested in, in interviews, uh, and in interviewing other pros out there. And, uh, I know a lot of folks, and I know a lot of folks, uh, would love to, to hang out and we can chit chat and talk about story, visual storytelling and and stuff like that. So if that's something you would like to hear about, drop it in the chat and we can make it happen. Uh, uh, BNZN.T, yeah, some Discord chat groups for artists are great. I joined some recently and, and now it doesn't feel as lonely. No, it's pretty cool. Um, I was just looking into that myself about uh, for our group of people here for the uh, Paul Angeli, uh storyboard channel here, and uh, you know, we're, I was just looking at how to put that together and stuff. Uh, uh, I know a few people have asked me to uh, help out with some mentoring and uh, trying to come up with some uh, different strategies there to uh, reach out to you and help you in different ways if you want the personal one-on-one -on -one, uh, help. Um, so that's something. If you want to do something like that, drop it in the chat. Let me know or send me a DM. I'd love to. To learn more and uh, be able to help you out even further um yeah but uh working with artists and, and doing what we're doing like right now is like helps you get you know i just remember back in the day when i got started you know um there was no internet <laughs> there was no you know you had to cold call you had to write letters you had to go to conventions you had there was no light box uh you know uh you went to, you know, I, I hang out at different art art colleges and meet people there because my college didn't, wasn't really an art college, you know, and uh, you meet people and, and through professional work and those type of things. It's, it's so much easier today and, and to hang out with a group of people and just chill and draw is fun. 
Um, so then, do, 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 do. how do you come across these? Uh, is that groups? I think. Ronnie said, "Yeah, they're they're on uh, they're their own channels, and maybe we'll create one." Let's see, Ronnie. I usually find them on Twitch in the art category or uh, some servers. Yeah, I think uh, from YouTube art creators. Yeah, and then we'll try to put one over here. That'd be fun. Uh, Ponge, do you have any hashtags uh, that we could use for Instagram so we could see more of your work if we want to share? Yeah, just um, if you if you're cool with me sharing your work on on my uh, Instagram feed, I'd love to to. To chat, you know, you can send it over to me at, uh, I, I believe it's, uh, let me put that back up for you real quick. Let me see if it shows you right there. Instagram, Mr. Paul Angeli is uh, M-R-P-A-U-L-A-N-G-E-L-I is my Instagram handle. You got that right there. Just uh, throw that at symbol in front of it and uh, send me a DM. And uh, I'd love to share your work with you on my channel. I think that's what's cool about social media. Uh, it's supposed to be social, and uh, I, I want to. I, I need to do more of that too, and just shout out different artists and uh, pros, buddies of mine, or you know other folks that inspire me. And if it inspires me, hopefully it can inspire you. Or if you want to share your work, uh, I love to see it. I know. Uh, you know, Andreas, uh, one of our friends here on the channel, uh, he sends me, uh, you know, a couple sketches a week, and I, and I just do some quick, uh, uh, you know, reviews of his work that he's been sending over to me. So, uh, please, yeah, please take the time, you know, shoot it over. I, I'd love to, to see your work and what you're working on, and any feedback I can help out. Uh, and I'm trying to get up some extra resources and some time there, too, to, to help you out. Cool. Any other questions? Drop them in the chat. I'm going to go back over here. Oops. Let's turn a uh, big poly head off and put little poly head back on. And Photoshop. So, boop. There's little poly head. Boop. There I am. Okay, cool. Um, I, I, let's draw a little bit. I'm, I'm talking myself to death here. If you got anything to put in the chat, go for it. And uh, let's drop this down. Okay, so when I'm sketching, let's just say this is my sketch surface here. When I'm sketching, oh, I usually um, try to put a little bit of gray tone because if I'm looking at the screen, I sort of it looks a little bit brighter over here on the screen, but I try to, to just put a, a tone down so it's not like so bright and stuff. And then uh, let's see what I got here. Oops. Open this up a little bit. I play around with my brushes. I've been using, you know, if you're looking at my brushes here, I usually use this hard brush a lot, you know, in terms of, of stuff. If I'm doing a quick shading, um, I'll use the, the soft brush if I'm doing some shading and stuff. And then I'll just like, if I'm using the hard brush a lot, um, I think that I have a four point. Let me just see how that feels. That feels pretty good. I'll, I'll use that, that, that brush like that. I use a few different brushes in terms of, of what I'm doing and stuff. So... I'm just uh, I'm just sketching and stuff and I'll keep it sort of, if I'm just sketching, I'll just keep it sort of loosey-goosey here. I usually don't tend to... If 
I'm just loosely sketching I'm just having fun working on something I'll keep it really loose if there's something I don't like I just rip it out <laughs> darken it up or whatever it might be. I'm just practicing and just drawing loose. You know, sometimes if I do that and I'm like, okay, cool, that's sort of cool. I like that. That sort of works for me. Or what I sometimes I'll do is I'll just drop it down like that and just do a sort of a, a cleanup layer. I'll play with it a little bit more. And just have some fun with it. Just try to loosen up a little bit, put a little bit where what I like. I think a lot of it is just learning and practicing and knowing what feels right, what doesn't feel right. In terms of when you're drawing, not really storyboarding, just sort of working out and work out ideas. You can sort of see how your sketch works. Just hanging out. I'll, I'll try different hairstyles or In terms of what I'm doing. Maybe I'll thicken up my brush a little bit. I think sketching is just fun. I'm not using any reference. I'm just sort of going from this is where you can build that, you know, those skill sets of uh, remembering and, and things like that. That's what makes it sort of fun.
I'll just draw different things, whatever I'm feeling like, and As we're sketching along and just having fun. Sometimes I'll go in there and if I'm gonna add some. What's cool about working in digital is you can uh, just do whatever you want, you know. And When you're creating a thumbnail, I just sort of, you know, I'll, I'll do a quick thumbnail for you to show you sort of my process there. But um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't focus on too much on lighting when I'm doing a thumbnail. I'll, I'll show some knockout, but I, I save that uh, for my uh, rough stage, you know, um, in terms of what I'm working on. I'm just going to add some color in this guy real quick and then we'll do that. I, I just I just work in a couple of tones because um, when you're boarding itself, you don't want to waste too much time. So let's just say, um, let me pull a, let's pull a board up here. Turn these off. So the question was, uh, how important do you think shadows and highlights are when creating a thumbnail? Okay, so I've seen different people do different things. Let's get this to black. Let's just draw a quick little thumbnail. Okay. Move this front and center. Okay, so let's put that there. So when I'm drawing the thumbnail, I'll just think about it in two or three colors, uh, or two, two or three tones. Um, how, how do I do this? Okay, so if I'm... Uh, and I try to keep it really simple because i got to really get these, these, these boards knocked out. So I think I've shown you some of my... I sort of cheats. Let's 
say I have this character here. Got some earrings on her or something. You know what I mean? Maybe that there's some sort of... Something like that. I usually, what I'll do is I'll keep it in a couple of tones. So I'll grab, I'm just drawing a quick thumbnail of what I'm doing. Grab the character here. Um, I'm just working really quick. Uh, I'll just drop some white in there. And then I could quickly just clean that up. And I'll just clean it up like that. And then maybe I'll come back in. Uh, sometimes I might even come in with a different color. Sometimes I've seen some board artists do that too. Where they're just going to, because they want you to be focused on that one character. Sometimes they'll do it like this, or I'll use grayscale or something. When it, when, if I have a bunch of panels, I'm looking at a page of, of 20, 30 panels. I'll just keep it really simple like this to tell the story. Either like that or I'll just dumb it down a little bit. And then maybe I might have one more. Layer of black showing these. The fencing or something like that. Just keep it really simple and then go on to the next one. So, uh, how do you important thing? Um, our storyboard is similar to comics. Uh, HMT was asking. Um, yes and no. Um, I, I think there's a lot of fantastic comic book artists that um, also do um, storyboards. But I think they're two different media types and you're you're pretty much with a comic with it with a comic book you you have your pen let me get this pen down i get asked this question quite a bit if you're looking at western comic books You have your comic page and you're looking at your
it's a whole different medium and, and what you're doing is your eye in western comics you're going to start your eye is going to go from left to right top to bottom and I think what is cool about comics on that point is let's just say this is the cityscape you got your cityscape um, Say this Batman is looking over the city or whatever. Down in the city streets or whatever, and your your eye is going. So what's happening is between your your eye is going from left to right, top to bottom, and what you're doing is your um in between these shots, you have the gutter. Is that empty? And and your 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 brain is coming up. What is that in between shot to get to the next shot? So if I'm going, you know, in a sense, if I'm reading the comic like that and then turn page that's that's how how you're working it you know and that's how your eyes reading it and that's where the art uh, the layout and you as a storyteller are telling a fantastic story to keep you from panel to panel you don't have to give all the information to the viewer the viewer is going to make up what's in the in between between each of these panels you know uh in, in the story of the uh, comic book and we want to in in they're working really hard to plus you have uh you know all of your uh what do you call it your your bubble caps you know batman saying this you know, lost in the city, you're reading it, you know, ha ha ha, you know, whatever it is, and you're reading those, those bubble, bubble, uh, uh, bubble, uh, text, you know, bubbles, text bubbles to, 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 to tell your story. And the difference between that and as we talk about storyboarding is storyboards almost work the same way. But what you're doing is you're telling a story from shot to shot to shot. And you need to show the viewer everything because there is no gutter. And you're telling everything that's happening in that sequence because there is no blank spot in between. So if I'm telling a story like this, There is no gutter because we're only watching one shot at a time. Uh, you know, we're, watch we're watching only one shot at a time. So if I'm looking at this, I'm going, this is, because you're watching on a big movie screen or on a TV set, I'm saying that's shot one, shot two, shot three, shot four. Maybe it might be 4A, you know, shot five, shot six seven eight of that sequence and you know it's the story is going to be told in a different way if that makes sense to you friends 
and uh, you're not looking at it on a single page you're looking at it on a movie screen while you're hanging out over here here's little Polly do, 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 do. he's got his bucket of popcorn he's like alright And Paul is looking here, eating his popcorn. But his eye is watching that screen. And you're watching all those shots together, uh, making it for an animation or making it for whatever else. And if you want to go back, you can go back into, there's a lot of similarities. Sure, I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to have my establishing shot of the the mountains or whatever the sun's out here maybe we have some cactus we know it's the old west you know what i mean and uh maybe there's some sort of next shot is You know, the eagle in the sky, and then you come down and maybe there's uh, some cowboys. There's one right here that her cowboy clothes her. Another cowboy right there. Another cowboy right there. And you sort of have your master shot. You have your establishing shots. You have your master shot. And then you have the desperado cowboy. You know, and you're, you're and what you're watching that movie, and you're putting all these shots together. If that makes sense, so they're they're using still doing visual storytelling, uh, but you're doing it shot by shot by shot, and, it, and it's um, it's how you're doing your blocking, your acting, where the camera's moving, you know, and and, and those type of articles. I, I think there's a lot more similarity in, in is like a is a is a single picture story is what you're trying to tell with a storyboard and with a film and that makes it very much different the other one you're actually you're you're looking at a page and you're going through all the panels we do read excuse me we do read panels like this on the uh the storyboard but most of the time you're watching it you're clicking through the one shot so you're not seeing the whole page of all the all the images you're going one by one by one because i want to see where the edit is i want to see how am I feeling? What's the motion? Those type of things. So a little bit different. I hope I hope that helps a little bit uh, for you, uh, HMT. I uh, hope that. Any other questions out there? Just curious if there's any more questions. Throw them up in the chat. Appreciate everybody joining in, man. This has been a, a great session. Some really good questions, everybody. Really, really good questions. So uh, thanks for uh, asking those great questions. If there's any more, just throw them into the chat real quick. Uh, let me take a, while you're putting those into the chat, I'm going to take a second here and uh, take a sip of my drink. Real quick like. Do a couple more sketches here and call it a night. Okay. Cool. If you have a question, just drop it into the chat. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Again, if you're uh, catching us live or you're catching us on the um, the replay, uh, my name is Paul Angeli and I'm a live action storyboard artist. And uh, 
coming to you, bringing you this YouTube channel. Uh, tonight is our Sketching After Hours uh, session, and I hope uh, everybody uh, learned a little bit about your sketchbooks and how to use a sketchbook in multiple uses other than just drawing pictures in it and drawing sketches. Uh, right now, I just got—I was just asked a great question about uh, the difference between comics and, and uh, storyboards. And uh, but uh, I invite you, if you're getting some great value out of this replay, or you're catching and getting great value out of this for the live stream, please uh, consider subscribing. Um, click that bell notification button so uh, you're reminded uh, when a new video is ready to post, or when I have a live stream coming up. I appreciate you joining in, and I thank you very much. So let's go back to the chat here. Have there ever been books of storyboards, like collections of them? You know what? Um, let me, uh, Richard Bennett, uh, a friend of mine out there, um, if you look him up, um, Richard did uh, a lot of the storyboard work for um, the Godzilla and Kong movies and Godzilla vs. Kong, and I know that he did a, uh, a crowdfunding for his book. Let me look him up real quick. Yeah, he just did a um, rich, uh, a friend of mine, Richard Bennett. He did. He just came out with a new book. Um, it's called Godzilla and Kong: The Cinematic Storyboard Art of Richard Bennett. Um, and uh, he just came out with this book, and he has all the storyboards from. If you're into monster movies like Godzilla and Kong, fantastic artist. And uh, if you ever get a chance to to see his work. Uh, really great stuff. Um, another one, there was, uh, I know uh, a lot of the Star Wars movies, they have some storyboard books for that. Um, another book that came out uh, was when uh, Terminator 2, let me look up that book. The Terminator uh, Art of book. And I believe there was a book there. Gosh, yeah, it was called, uh, let's see how much this Terminator 2 Judgment Day, the book of the film. It, it's literally all the shots of the film, you know, in a storyboard fashion. So um, that that's another good book to look at. And I know they had one for Jurassic Park. And that's when the film first came out. Let me just see that book real quick. Yeah, it was... Yeah, it was Jurassic Park, and it was just a, and I was sort of shocked when I went into it, uh, and, and the book was literally all the storyboards from it. Um, if you go back to, like, uh, some of the books, like Illusion of Life uh, for Disney, um, they have a uh, book, you know, a lot of storyboards in there, too. Um, you know, you go to the back of the old Nine Old Men, you know, um, Bill Pete, if you've seen uh, his stuff from Disney. A lot of these art of books uh, today have a lot of the um, storyboard work in it um, and stuff like that. And a lot of uh, my, my uh, storyboard friends out there um, usually put a lot of their uh, storyboards uh, into Instagram or they have a comparison. Here's the film and here's the storyboard and stuff like that. So there, there are some collections uh, of storyboards out there for certain big films. A lot of the art of books, if you're more, I, I don't know which area you're, you're into, Maria. I know a lot of the feature animation where they have the art of books. Um, they'll have, it's usually not a big, there's usually a lot more concept design in a lot of those books, but uh, quite a few of them have uh, a lot of the storyboards, whether you're looking at like Monsters, Inc. or others, you can see all the, the breakdown of the storyboards or some of the Leica um, films, whether it be Paranorman or the, uh, what is it, uh, what's the other one, Coraline, you know, some of those other ones, uh, they might have some breakdown boards for you to, to, to study from. But I would just do some Google searches out there, find your favorite storyboard artists out there, whether it be uh, cartoon animation, um, 
veer into something like adult, like Rick and Morty, or a uh, feature film, you know, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, work out there online that you could check out um, to see the actual panels, uh, you know, and shots and stuff like that, if that helps out you guys. So very cool. I hope that, that gives you some ideas of, of stuff to look up to, too. So and find your favorite artists in their sites and see their work, you know. Um, and if I come across some stuff on my Instagram uh, as I'm going through, um, so yeah, check out that that Godzilla one, uh, Richard Bennett, good dude. Um, you know, check out his work, um, very good stuff. And I, I think he had an introduction, you know, the intro was written by one of the directors he worked with, and uh, just a great book. It's a little, it's a little, uh, sixty, I think it's something like sixty-five dollars. But it, but it's a it's a good book, and he, he puts a lot of extra goodies in there and stuff for you. Uh, but good stuff. Um, check it out. If I see anything that uh, comes across my way that I think are good books, uh, you know, uh, other than a how-to storyboard book, and you just want to see the boards and sort of recreate it, let me do a quick other search too. Let me just see if there's other. Because there's a lot on, you know, storyboards and stuff like that. Yeah, I think the one was uh, there's a Star Wars storyboards, the original trilogy, and it actually breaks down the actual artwork. Um, Game of Thrones, yeah, season one through seven. So there, there are some some books out there. If you do a, a, a shot list, you know, or a, a Google, you know, Amazon search, there's quite a few different books out there and stuff. So of uh, some of your favorite films and things like that, if that works for you. Cool. Go back over here. Okay, well, cool. Well, again, tonight we've been having a good time. Uh, we talked about, um, we talked about sketchbooking in our sketching after hours. This was our sort of our, sort of breakdown between what is the difference between a storyboard and a comic book which is a great question. We're gonna talk about how to draw that real quick. Doing some sketches. You can sort of see I, I have that. Let me put that image back up. Where is that image? Where did that go? You can sort of see this is a shot from my where did it go? My sketchbook. Just doing some drawings in my sketchbook uh, in terms of what we're doing. So good stuff. Okay, where's my little text thing I did here? Okay. So to sort of close us out a little bit tonight, but why sketchbook? You know, we want a sketchbook so we can document your learning, uh, use it as a journal, use your sketchbook for sketches and drawing, use your sketchbook for information uh, over time, use a res resource for for inspiration. Um, there's there's a lot of things that we can use for our sketchbook and a lot of great uses. Uh, with these books, you know, I was showing quite a few of them that I have over here of uh, what you can do with them. And uh, let me bring back Big Polly real quick. Oh, there we go. There's a lot of uses for these books, you know, and um, I, I challenge you as, as we, we knock it out into 2024, we got the first, this is a, uh, you know, day for, for me, it's day the fifth right now, but uh, Day four for some of you on the, the, uh, the West Coast still, and other places, use, use those sketchbooks and uh, use those uh, as a tool, as a resource for yourself, um, as you're documenting your journey as an artist, as a visual storyteller, as a comic artist. It sounds like there's a nice group of uh, people on the, on the chat here today and people that are interested in visual storytelling. So, so use those books, you know. Uh, Take advantage of uh, sketching and those things. Learn, stretch yourself in, in terms of what you're doing. Like I said, uh, use use it to document your journey. 
Use it to journal. How are you feeling today? What 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 let me down? And you know, how can I inspire myself so I can always stay at a uh, an average? You know, in terms of you know my ups and downs and. And this is a tough path. If it was easy, everybody would have their name up in lights, you know. Uh, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of dedication. You know, we were talking about all the essences of what makes a storyboard artist, you know. It's not just drawing skill. It's uh, problem solving. It's being able to tell a good story. Um, on top of the artistic side of being able just to draw human figures and perspective and, and uh you know, gesture and mechanical objects and landscapes and interiors of buildings and things like that. You still need to know composition. You need to know how the camera moves and operates. How do you fake out lenses in your shots? You know, if I if I have you know different focuses and those type of things. You know, we're problem solvers. We're trying to solve problems. Uh, you know, and help provide solutions for our directors and clients. Um, you know, uh, other things too, we have to be, you know, uh, still some people still draw on paper and submit those, but also too, you, you need to know the technology. You need to know your technology of what you're doing, you know. You need to know your self software, you, you know, whether it be the Photoshop, the Storyboard Pro, or some of these other tools out there, you need to know these things or 3D tools. We were talking about Blender earlier and incorporating Blender into your uh, storyboards, you know. Uh, you need to know how to put together editing also, too, if you're uh, being required to put together an animatic of, uh, you know, to, to make your images move. So then you also need to know a little bit about the basics of animation, squash and stretch, all the different uh, various principles of uh, animation. You need to know how to network, you know. You need to know how to be a business person, you know. Uh, it, it's different, we're, we're, you know, a lot of us work remote and uh, we're our own business and uh, we're, we're offering our services, uh, what we know how to do. And uh, some of us are union-based, others are not. And uh, we, you have to go out and go get your clients. So you just don't, there's not somebody feeding you unless you have an agent. And I know I was asked that question a couple times uh, over this course this last week, you know. Uh, you don't have an agent sitting there feeling, you know, depending on the type of work you're doing, uh, you know, do you have an agent out there feeding you projects? Or while you're working on one project, you are out there hustling to get the next job. And uh, I think that's what might be best, uh, beneficial if I can get some interviews uh, put together so uh, we can share some of the stories and, and uh, what people go through so you know what you're up against. Um, BN, uh, BNZND, uh, yeah, tech is always improving. You need to really be up to date with this stuff. Yeah, totally. You know, uh, not only in, uh, you know, 3D or, you know, uh, storyboarding, uh, you know, uh, software, but also you need to know your, your editing software, you know. Uh, you need to be able to put these animatics together. And can you do it more of a stop motion style or do you need to fully animate, you know. You see that that uh, the animatics for that uh, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there's some really cool artwork going on there and some fantastic artists doing their stuff. So um, it takes a lot, you know. Uh, so that's why I kicked off uh, 2024 with take massive action. And I challenge you at home, take massive action. If this is a, a career choice that you like to get into or something you like, like to learn more about, you must take massive action, you know? And, or it might be something, maybe you're a, a children's book illustrator. Uh, a lot of you out there are uh, comic artists. Go for it, man, you know? Go do it, create your book. It's okay if it's not good on the first try. I remember creating a lot of different books and uh, a lot of different characters and things like that. and. You know, some, some do great, others, eh. <laughs> you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, but as long as you're learning, failing is good. Failing is learning if you're learning from what went wrong and so you don't fall into that. We were talking about that uh, on uh, Tuesday, uh, the Ned Ryerson thing from Groundhog Day, always dropping into that big mud puddle, Bill Murray, just <laughs> watch out the first step's a doozy, you know, yeah. But uh, eventually Bill Murray's character learned how to navigate and not fall into that puddle anymore. So uh, I think failure is good too. And uh, we, we've talked a lot about that on our uh, questions on uh, how good your storyboards are or what they want to be. You know, sometimes you'll just make poor work. 
but are you learning? Uh, maybe just having a bad day. How did you go about it? And then today, of course, we were talking about sketchbooks. Use it as a tool, my friends. Use it as a tool. Um, hold yourself accountable uh, to filling out that sketchbook. Um, it keeps all that documents together. Like I said, I get a little uh, crazy now because I use uh, like uh, just copy paper and stuff to get stuff knocked out. But uh, you know, ho hopefully these, these are some uh, tips and tricks that can help you, my friends, at home and uh, as you're learning to uh, uh, pursue your passion for visual storytelling. So. Uh, I'm going to call it a night. It's 1.30 in the morning for me. i got a long, busy day tomorrow, but I wanted to make sure I was hanging out with you guys. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, right now I'm tentatively scheduled to do a, a, a storyboard jam session on Saturday night. Uh, if I can't make it due to the travel and, the, and this pending snowstorm coming through over here on the East Coast, uh, I'll, I'll let you know and maybe we might schedule it for a Sunday or something else if I can't do it on Saturday. So I want to make sure I'm there for you friends out there and uh, have some fun uh, boarding with you. But other than that, I want you all to have a fantastic evening. If you're catching us live, thanks for joining me. I got so many good friends on there. I got bnzn.t thanks so much for joining maria hmt i got ronnie my good friend ronnie I haven't seen for a while i got uh yashava you know i got uh, everybody spicer you know so many different people uh joining and interested in, in this uh in this uh visual storytelling and i really appreciate you you watching for those that join the live stream for those that are catching me on the replay I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Um, please, if this is giving you great value, please feel you know. Please consider subscribing. I'd appreciate it. Let's me know that you're interested in seeing more. Uh, don't forget to click the bell notification button so I can uh, communicate with you and get the notification of when the next video is happening. So, till then, my friends, have a fantastic evening. Keep working hard. Keep filling up those sketchbooks. You have a great night and I see you. I'll see you in the next live stream. Take care. Have a fantastic night.